So welcome to the next lecture in electric circuit analysis. We were discussing the Laplace transform. In the previous lecture, we have introduced the Laplace transform. Now, in this particular lecture, we will see how the Laplace transform is inversed to get the signal in time domain. Suppose f of s has the general form. So f of s is the Laplace transform of f of t. So given an input signal f of t, we have the Laplace transform as f of s. Now if we need to convert the Laplace transform signal to the time domain, we have to go for the inverse Laplace transform. Now if a signal f of s is obtained to us which is a function of Laplace variable s can be written in the form of numerator by denominator that is in the fraction form then the roots of the numerator polynomial equating with 0 is known as the zeros of f of s. Now the zeros are basically the roots of the denominator polynomial and numerator polynomial and the the roots of the denominator polynomial are known as the poles of the Laplace function f of s. These functions can be written in the form of k which is the gain multiplied with the function of zeros which is known as z of i divided by we will be having the poles that is s minus poles of i. So, the zeros and poles are the roots of the numerator polynomial and the denominator polynomial. We can use the partial fraction expansion to break the function f of s into simple terms. Now what are the steps that we do to find the inverse of the Laplace transform? The first step is decompose the function f of s into simple terms using partial fraction expansion. So use the partial fraction expansion so that we can get the simple terms of f of s. We have to find the inverse of each term separately by matching entries from the table that we have discussed in lecture 13a where we have seen how the particular type of function is having the Laplace transform f of s. So the table will be useful that we have discussed in lecture 13a. There are basically three possible forms that the function f of s may take and two step approach has to be followed for each possible form. Let us take the first form that is the simple pole form. So this is the first form that we are going to discuss. So any function f of s will have a numerator polynomial n of s and the denominator polynomial may be break up into the product of different poles where the poles pi is not equal to pj. So p1, p2 to pn are the various roots of the denominator polynomial. Now using the partial fraction we can break up the function as the summation of the terms. So here the product terms can be converted to summation term that is the plus term using the partial fraction term. So we will be having the constant term in the numerator k1, k2, kn. This partial fraction is done assuming that the degree of the numerator polynomial is less than the denominator polynomial or otherwise we can say that the denominator polynomial is more higher degree of the numerator polynomial. The Numerator constants k1, k2 to kn are basically known as the residues. These residues are being calculated using the formula s plus pi multiplied with the function f of s under the condition s is equal to minus of pi. So we can get the various ki values. Now we can do the inverse Laplace transform of the each individual element of f of s because we have obtained the constant k1, k2 and so on and p1, p2, p3 are the roots of the denominator polynomial which are known to us. So we can obtain the term to term basis inverse Laplace transform multiplied with the step signal u of t. So this is the first form of simple poles. Now if the poles are repetitive that form the second case. 
So we can see that any function f of s, if the poles are same, however they are repeated, means they are having a power of 1, 2, n minus 1 to n, where n is the highest order of the denominator polynomial and the numerator coefficient that are obtained from the partial fraction k1, k2 to kn and there are, will be some remaining part which will not include the poles. In that case, all the constants from kn to kn minus m can be obtained using the previous way with the first term kn will be obtained s plus p to the power n multiplied with fs under the condition s is equal to minus p. Whereas the remaining term like kn minus 1, n minus 2 to n minus m will be obtained as the differential term order. So if we want to obtain n minus 1, then it will be of first order d by ds, which we will be differentiating s plus p to the power n fs. If we have the second term is 1 by 2 factorial d square by ds square s plus p to the power n f of s and all values we are going to get at s equal to minus of p. Then we know from these properties that we have discussed in lecture 13a in the table that Laplace inverse of 1 by s plus a to the power n is given by this formula. Now we can use this concept to find the inverse Laplace transform f of t for the given function f of s where the remaining term is f1 of t is the remaining part of f of s. So we can obtain the inverse Laplace transform which are the function of t term for the given f of s when there is a repetitive pulse and it is of the second form. The third form that we are going to discuss now is basically known as the complex poles means a pair of complex pole will be there in the denominator which can be simple or repetitive anything. It is double or multiple pole if repetitive, simple if it is not repetitive. So it can be simple or multiple the poles but however the poles will be in complex form. Complex form means we will have the real part and the imaginary part. See, simple comp complex poles may be handled the same way as simple real poles. So we have already discussed how we are going to take the simple real pole as the form number one. That same will be used here in complex pole concept because complex algebra is involved that result will always be cumbersome. So little bit difficulty will be there because we are handling the complex algebra. So in order to minimize the network and take an easier approach, we have there is a method known as completing the square method. Let us see how do we deal with that. So if a function f of s is there whose denominator roots are complex given the quadratic equation s square plus a s plus b then we can complete the square term so that we can deal with the complex poles. In that case what we have to do is that we will be taking the s in the form of s plus alpha and we will be segregating the part like here we will be having s plus alpha square and we will be having s plus alpha whole square plus beta square. Now how do we do the completion of the square? Let us see the denominator polynomial is given by s square plus a s plus b. Now these will be com converted into full square term by adding the term like s square is already there. We can convert this into 2 alpha s alpha square plus beta square that is equal to s plus alpha whole square plus beta square which we have put it in the denominator polynomial. Now the numerator polynomial a1 of s plus a2 can be written as a1 s plus alpha plus beta1 b1 into beta. So this is the denominator polynomial and this is the numerator polynomial which are completing the square term. Then it will be easy to obtain the inverse Laplace transform by taking the inverse of the term and it will be having the cosine term and the sine term in the inverse Laplace transform which is coming from the table that we have discussed in lecture 38.
The remaining terms will be there which is not having any poles that will be directly converted to F1 of T. So this is the third form of the inverse Laplace transform. So we have discussed the simple pole, we have discussed the multiple poles and we have discussed the complex pole. Let us take the example one by one to understand what we have discussed. So given a function f of s, we have to obtain the inverse Laplace transform. So there are three terms are there in the function f of s. Then f of t which is the inverse Laplace transform converting the frequency domain to time domain, we will be obtaining the inverse Laplace transform of f of s. Then one by one the Laplace inverse of each term we are going to obtain. So 3 by s will have the Laplace transform as 3, inverse Laplace transform will have 3, whereas 5 by s plus 1 will be 5 e to the power minus t, 6 by s square plus 4 will have 3 sin 2 t multiplied with the step signal u of t for all time t greater than or equal to 0. These conversion of the inverse Laplace transform of each quantities we have already discussed in lecture 13a where how to get the values uh, of a particular function and its inverse we have discussed. Now the next function f of s here we have the complex we have the multiple pole system. So here we have s s plus 2 and s plus 3 product term and on the numerator we have s square plus 12. We can break up these into three different terms a by s plus b by s plus 2 c by s plus 3. Now these constant term a b and c which we have to obtain using the partial fraction method. So the constant a b and c we are trying to get by multiplying when we want to de deduce the value of a the numerator is, the denominator is s that is multiplied with the function f of s and equating the s to be 0. When we want to get the value of b, the denominator is s plus 2. So we are multiplying s plus 2 multiplied with f of s under the condition that s, plus s is equal to minus of 2. In the third term, we have s plus 3. So the c constant can be obtained as s plus 3 multiplied with f of s and under the condition as s equal to minus 3 where f of s is the given function which we will be substituting. Now we multiplied the function f of s with s so we are getting this quantity substituting s equal to 0 we will get 2. Here in the second term we will substitute s equal to minus 2 we will get minus 8 and third term we will substitute s equal to minus 3 we will get 7. So we have got the constant a, b and c and we can put it in the function f of s. Now we have the three terms which are separated out and we can easily obtain the inverse Laplace transform to get the signal in time domain. Term to term we can obtain the inverse Laplace transform multiplied with the step signal. Third problem let us see given a signal B of s which is in the form of 10 s, s square plus 4 divided by s into s plus 1 into s plus 2 whole square. We can break up these into some of the terms. Now here we have one repetitive term that is s plus 2 whole square. So we have been divided this into two terms. One is s plus 2 whole square and another is s plus 2. And the numerator co coefficients a, b, c and d which are the constant we will be getting uh, using the concept of partial fraction and one by one we will obtain the value of a, b, c and d. Getting the values of a b and c are same the process that we have done in the first problem where we will be multiplying the denominator s with the function b of s equating s to be 0. Here we have s plus 1 so we are multiplying s plus 1 with the function equating s to be minus 1. Here in the denominator we have the higher order 2 that is s plus 2 whole square multiplied with the function and equating s equal to minus 2 and get 1 by 1 the value of a, b and c which are 1, minus 14 and 20. Now the last one that is the repetitive pole s plus 2 we will be getting as the function d using the concept of the first differential d by ds s plus 2 whole square multiplied with ds under the condition s equal to minus 2. If other terms are there then we will be having 2 factorial, 3 factorial like that which we have discussed in the repetitive pulse. So here we have 13 as the function d. 
Now we will substitute each term one by one to get d of s and each term inverts Laplace transform we will be calculating. So we will get the function d of t which are which is obtained as the inverse Laplace transform of each quantity one by one multiplied with u of t to get the function in the time domain. One more problem let us see. So here in the denominator we have s plus 3 multiplied with s square plus 8s plus 25. So this will give us the complex rules. So we have converted this into two terms. The first term is a by s plus 3 which will take it here and the second term we are converting it in the form of complex b s plus c s square plus 8 s plus 25. We have to obtain the value of a, b and c. Now getting the value of a is same as we have done in the previous way s plus 3 which is the denominator polynomial uh, multiplied with the function h of s under the condition s equal to minus 3 then we will get the value 2. Now we see that the denominator of the second term has the root minus 4 plus minus j3 which is complex. Then we can obtain this by one easy method. What is that? If we substitute s equal to 0 as the first case and second case s equal to 1 in the equation we will be getting let us take this equation as 1 then in the equation if we substitute the value of s equal to 0 in the equation 1 we will be getting one equation as 20 is equal to 25a plus 3c. We have already got the value of a is equal to 2. So we will be having, we can easily get what is the value of c which is equal to minus of 10. In the second case, we can substitute s equal to 1 in the first equation. We will be getting one equation which is the function of a, b and c. A we have already determined, C we have already determined. It means we can get the value of B. So this is an easy method by which we can get the constants B and C by following the values of S equal to 0 and S equal to 1 in the main function. Then we can obtain H of S by putting the value of A, B and C in the equation and then the second term we can broke up into completing the square term. So s square plus 8s plus 25 we can break up as s plus 4 whole square plus 9 using the concept that we have discussed how to complete the square and we can further break up this term into two quantities. Now we can obtain the inverse Laplace transform of h of s which is given from term to term basis. Now we have the cosine term and the sine term. So we can go one more step ahead so that we can combine the two terms and get only one term in cosine. We can leave the answer till here also. However, it would be better if we convert the answer in one single term that is cosine term. So second term and the third term we can combine together in terms of magnitude and angle to get the final answer h of t. So in the lecture 13b, we have discussed how to calculate the inverse of any Laplace transforms to convert the frequency domain signal into time domain signal. 13a we have seen how to operate the Laplace transform and in the coming lecture we will see convolution integral and integral differential equation. Thank you for now. See you in the next lecture.